your question to to get us back into the the swing of it. Um, yeah. The one thing I saw on your 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 blog uh, was the talking about uh, fintechs and especially startups. And the question is, you know, should entrepreneur, entrepreneurs be focusing more on collaborating with the established players, or should they be going for you know the dream of of disruption and trying to do the entire process on their own? Um, what, what advice would you almost give to to new entrepreneurs coming into this fintech space? Okay. So I, th I think you raise a valid point about how fintech entrepreneurs should position themselves. Uh, I think it's also well documented that over the last few years there has been a trend from uh, disrupting into collab uh, and moving towards collaboration. Um, I think the the trend is well documented, so I, I won't go into that. I think whether you you choose one or the other depends really on the business model and the, and the specific offering that you're bringing to the market. There may be uh, offerings that are a specific component of the value chain where then co uh, collaboration is perhaps the quickest route to market. Uh, because obviously without the other parts of the value chain, it's quite, it will be quite difficult to monetize that, uh, that, that part of the value chain on which you are innovating. Um, I mean, I, I think uh, to, to be perfectly honest, I, I think the biggest challenge is not that fintech innovators want to, want to collaborate with incumbents. I think the challenges of the incumbents may not be fully ready to, to, to collaborate with the fintech innovators. Uh, and I think that's where uh, you know my suggestions uh, to the incumbents about well think about what's your infrastructure are you ready and get ready to, to to be able to engage with those guys and be able to bring uh, the technology that you need into your business. Well, I mean, th this is one of the things that I think the data scientists are getting a little bit uh, annoyed with is they're going through the big data and they're finding some interesting correlations. For example. The one thing that they discovered was that lapse rate was connected to the premium policy date as well as when that person earned their salary. Um, you can imagine as if someone gets their salary and then it's their premium date, it's going to, I think we've got Kiara back on okay. the line. Uh, fantastic. Good to have her back. But um, yeah, the, the, the idea was that the lapse rate was connected to the premium start date and connected to when that person received their money. You know, if the person received their money and then they had to pay right after, they were less likely to lapse. Whereas if they received their, their salary and the time to pay the premium was like, you know, 28 days later, you know, they didn't have any more money at the end of the month, then the lapse rate was a lot higher. And so they thought, you know what, we found this, this great opportunity to improve you know, on the business, reduce lapse rates, and, and make money. The problem was is that the big insurers were like, this is great and all, but we actually can't really easily make a change to our product where we now start asking people when their salaries um, are and move the premium payment date because some of their legacy systems had anchored them to always make the payment on, let's say, the first of the month, irregardless mm -hmm. of, of when the, the, the data suggested. So it's, it's one of the interesting things is sometimes we can find some amazing discoveries, but the legacy systems aren't flexible enough to, to allow us to actually reap those benefits. So it's, I don't know, in, in your opinion, do you think this is maybe one of the big reasons why, um, especially the large corporates, need to do data transformation and you know, embrace digital systems and, and the new ones as, as soon as possible so that they can get these competitive advantages? I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, I think uh, the the scenario you describe is um, is a good one in the sense that it reminds me uh, about one of the strengths of the insurance industry. So the insurance industry industry has been very good at optimizing, uh, and and what I mean by optimizing is oh, is, is is making small changes that can have a value uh, value to the business. Perhaps this one is perhaps a, a one that is overly um, uh, complicated because of the legacy systems and, and it's therefore not a possibility. But uh, so, so I think it, it, the, the wider point here is that 
the, the, the challenge that the industry might be facing is that it's, it's, it's running out of all the opportunities for do these small changes. And then once you've run out of those small changes, then you have then to think about the bigger changes. Uh, like uh, you know, more significant data transformations, or or uh, you know, a, a serious look at uh, the legacy systems.